Hello and welcome. In this short tutorial you will learn how to properly derate a Learjet 35A in case you have one laying around in your garden or maybe like me you like to fly around with this beauty using FlySimWare's fantastic model in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The entire procedure will be carried out in reference to the 2006 Bombardier Aerospace Learjet 35-36 Quick Reference Handbook that I will link down below so that you can use the proper tables and figures for your next flight. First things first, there are some limitations to taking off using a reduced N1 setting. All reduced thrust settings are based on no anti-ice usage, that also includes nacelle only anti-ice. This therefore forbids reduced power takeoffs in icing conditions. Reduced N1 settings should also not be used in wet conditions or at high gradient runways, as all takeoff distances are based on dry and level runways. Another important point is the fact that at no time should the reduced takeoff thrust subsead 7.7% N1 from the maximum takeoff N1. This ensures that even when using reduced thrust, the aircraft will still be powered by at least 75% of its maximum rated takeoff thrust. This can, however, be neglected when using TR4000 thrust reversers, which this aircraft that we are currently setting in is equipped with. Now, the baggage is secured. Door is closed. The fuel is loaded and it's going to be an empty flight today, so perfect conditions for a reduced thrust takeoff. Now, I will skip the power up and we'll hear from each other after the engines are started. So, welcome back. The aircraft is ready and we can now start computing our takeoff data. We will first check what our max takeoff weight is using field elevation and temperature. For a flaps 8 degree takeoff, a pressure altitude of 110 feet, for Charlie Yankee Foxtrot Bravo Airport and an ambient temperature of 3 degrees, our max takeoff weight is 18,300 pounds, as seen here. Our current weight is around 12,800 pounds. Our required field length for this weight is therefore 2,540 feet, while runway 16, which is our departure runway, has 8,605 feet available. Since we are well below the max takeoff weight and we have a lot of runway to spare, we can say that a reduced takeoff thrust is allowed. Now, going back to the takeoff speeds and distances chart, we will now find our assumed temperature. It works by looking up the maximum temperature at which the runway length is still sufficient for a takeoff. In our case, going by 13,000 pounds takeoff weight, even at the temperature of 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit, a departure could still be performed, as we would need 3,475 feet while we have over 8,000 feet available. 100 degrees Fahrenheit is therefore our assumed temperature. We will use the given V1 value for our takeoff. V rotate and V2 can be obtained as usual. In our case, V rotate is 125 knots, while V2 is 124 knots. Last but not least, we look up our reduced N1 settings by using the partial power takeoff N1 setting chart for our thrust reversal equipment. Starting from the left, the outside air temperature is 4 degrees Celsius or about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. On the top row of the table, we find our assumed temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We can now see that these two temperatures meet at 87.2% N1, our new N1 setting for takeoff. The maximum N1 setting for our departure would have been 94.0% N1. We therefore derated our engines by 6.8% N1, which would have been within limits for non-TR4000 equipped aircraft. 